भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily spiritual podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Coast Stubadas. Welcome to the show. It's episode 1436, 1436. We're here for a special walk on Tuesday um, before we get to our special guest. You know, walk on, walk on Tuesdays, walk on Wednesdays is when we bring a person from our community that we think is doing something cool on. We pick their brain for about 10 minutes. We got a really special one today, but before we go there, we got Miss Mara here spinning the dials back from Vermont. Good morning. With a flower in your ear. <laughs> we had such a good trip to Vermont. We had a great trip. It was it was weird to be in Vermont and not be with Kishori Gopi, the bright light. But we were with Srinivas at the Waitsfield Inn, and uh it was really wonderful. We did some good hiking, Kostubi. You would have liked it. It was like tough yeah. hiking. Tough yeah, hiking. Was, yeah, it wasn't like, you know, you're walking down, uh, you know, a rail trail. It was like you were climbing. You're, there's roots and rocks. It was the it was the trail that goes from uh, the top of Vermont to the bottom of Vermont. And, uh, you know, some people get, do the whole through hike. Mm, but it, long yeah, we only did five miles and it was exhausting. It took us four hours. Took four, we, we, yeah, we, and, and we're pretty we're pretty quick. We didn't have packs on or anything, but it was exhausting. But you it was good hiking. Shoes and all that, boots. Yeah, we yeah, do. we do. You know, they've changed a lot. Hiking shoes have changed a lot since we were kids. more like sneakers now. Now people wear like sneakery shoes and things like that. When I was young, we used to wear um, what were they like? In, uh, what were they called? What are they, they're called those those big like uh, Timberlands. Yeah. No, like not that. Timberland. They were. Uh, I just said the word. Yeah, yesterday. the ones with the big red laces. Big red laces, yeah, those boots. <laughs> you look like you were climbing Everest, you know. Um, but yes, so uh, yeah, we had, like our hiking shoes on, and then, proper hiking boots. I think yeah, mine yeah. are more like hiking boots. Yours are more like sneakers. Yeah, and then we bike ride. We went bike riding. It's just like a beautiful time. And I tell you, everybody's coming to the Wisdom of the Sages retreat. It's change of seasons. The leaves are in full effect. Everybody who's from the city, they're going to really enjoy it. It's quite breathtaking up here mm. right now. You want some announcements? Please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's no show tomorrow, but we'll be back on Thursday at 7 a.m. Yeah, I'm going Florida. to Alachua. I'm going to Alachua, Florida. Yeah. I'm t- I've got, I got a special order to teach arts uh, to all the teenager devotee kids. That's so that, like your dream come true. It is. <laughs> my son, my son called me. He's like, all my friends want to learn uh, jujitsu and uh, some, you know, some kickboxing from you. So I'm bringing down pads and we're going to have a little a rumble. And then they're going to a Bhagavad Gita class. I think I'm going to do a Bhagavad Gita class for them. Oh, yeah. They, they booked. And then we're going to go to these springs. These springs I've never been called Devil Springs, which I immediately am like sort of like, I don't know. I don't like the devil in the name. <laughs> Due to my Catholic upbringing, but I heard it's a really cool place. I follow Springs on Instagram, and it came up Devil Springs. I've never heard of this. It's not far from Alachua, so I'm going to go there too. Uh, one more announcement: If Wisdom of the Sages has been helpful in your life, and you'd like to contribute to our work, log on to wisdomofthesages.com and become a supporting member of the Sage Community Platform. For a minimum five dollar monthly contribution, you get access to a wide range of live and archived classes, community chat. Uh, merchandise, retreat registrations, and much, much more. Just go to wisdomofthesages.com and join today. Uh, I also forgot to mention, I'm doing two Maha classes in Daytona Beach, Florida, this weekend. If any Florida people want some bhakti bhakti slash yoga classes, um, I'll put the info up tomorrow because I can, or not tomorrow, but I'll put it on my Instagram stories, something like that, if you're in the area. All right, it's time to bring in our walk on Tuesday, Kostuba, and it's your friend and mine, Thomas Essig. Good morning, Tom. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning, all. Thomas has been here from the beginning. He's actually the one, if you're listening to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, he's the one who actually engineered our Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That was me and Tom sitting, sitting around one afternoon playing around with sounds and 
sound bites and um, say, say, you know, we chanted that together and then we tripled it and doubled it and quadrupled it. And that was a great day. We made that when, when it was done. We were like, that's the best. That was How are a you, great Tom? Day. Good morning. And it's a, it's a very exciting day for you today, too, because uh, your film, Something Divine, is getting aired on a channel. And we're going to encourage everyone to check it out. We have had so many people write us, hey, how can we see this film? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm going to put it on um, my Instagram account. I think Wisdom of the Sage is going to put it on their Instagram account. So you can follow us and you can share it as much. We, we encourage everybody to share it as much as possible. It's about he started off writing about my spiritual journey. But why don't you tell about how it turned out? Yeah, it was uh, originally intended to be actually the the original from uh punk to monk um was actually a working title for the movie i don't think you actually knew about that i did not but good yeah, job it was it was so funny but as things turned out as the journey of filming a documentary and you talk to people in interviews i saw something more than just one person mm. and i started to see the interviewees um and listening to the stories, um, and I started to see it completely different. And I was like, wait, we have all been to India. And the, let's, let me, let's turn this into the journey of self-exploration um, without preaching and to actually leave it up to you to decide what's, what's, what's your life, you know? Mm -hmm. So it became a process of going through a lot of introspection with myself, getting my ego out of the way. You know, you, you get into entertainment, you start getting into films because I was already involved in film. Um, and yeah, Krishna really knocked me down a peg during COVID. Really, <laughs> it really, really, I could, I actually went to my producer, Alex Knapp, and who's also one of the uh, cinematographers. I actually walked into his house and said, I can't finish this. I'm not, I can't ethically do this. I actually put this movie in the can. Mm, I didn't know. And that. it took me a while uh, through COVID and dealing with my own like brain and my ego to finally settle down and had a great conversation with actually with uh, somebody we all know, Cody Rajowski. Mm. And I had, you know, and I had a great conversation with her and she goes, What's your. What's the one thing that an audience can grab that you have, Tom? And I've said spirituality. So right then and there, it all went away from the Raganaut story to the one thing that I had complete from all the hundred, I have a hundred hours of footage. And that's how it really began to turn. And everything then started falling into place. Got my editor. Actually, you're sitting in the room where I was turned on to my editor, Ragnar Friednach mm. by uh, Jody. You had a kirtan. It was the end of COVID. That's right. You had, and I was sitting there looking at your wall going, what am I, what am I going to do? I need an editor. Now I have the idea. And Jody walks over and goes, I hear you do movie stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And I told her what I was doing. She got, I said, I, yeah, I just need a, a really good editor. Editors You've got a great editor. Out. You've got a great cinematographer and you really put this to, and you really directed it incredibly. Um, your footage was phenomenal. It was like pilgrimages through India. It was like live band performance. It was great, vulnerable interviews. Yeah. And it, I, I felt like it was people, people just being honest about everything falling apart. And I think that is a, is a lot of times ways that people come to God is their world falls up to their knees and they just start saying, now what? And some people really spoke. Some people really spoke to me. The last time I watched this, when you showed it in the Boston area, I could have a great appreciation um, uh, for, for so many of the, the characters you you brought in the uh, personalities you brought in the film. It it really touched me. There was times I was crying. There was times I was uh, moved, and and the and the there was great memories. And I feel you feel like you're in these holy places at times. Yeah, that was the idea was to, um, you know, Derek Brown 
who you know. Uh, is also the other cinematographer. I mean, he's 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 got a special gift for capturing what we want to see. Um, him and Alex did a great job. But anyway, um, it it was it was something that that's why these stories became so important to share it in a way where I'm not saying, okay, now you have to go to church and you have to do this. It's not that just sharing experience, life experience, and the audio was done. So you feel like you are in India. You feel like you're hearing what you are hearing in a, in a club. And especially the way, especially the youth of today footage is amazing to me. <laughs> So it's actually one of my favorite things to watch because of how it's shot. It's so well done. Well, um, you know, me and Kostuba have been talking a lot about Father Sergius from Leo Tolstoy. And it's about a it's about a, an aristocratic man in the whatever 1800s and his journey towards God and his stumbling blocks and his pitfalls and his successes and his challenges. And when when anybody from this podcast, people who are spiritually minded, when they read those stories, they sort of put, I find at least myself, I put myself in father Sergius's footsteps. Um, I, th I think when I wrote my book, punk to monk, it's when people also, they're just not real he hearing about, you know, Ray Capo's, you know, uh, becoming a, you know, from a punk singer, they're, but we're seeing, or, or read Raz Radna Swami's book, but we're seeing ourselves and yeah, as different as we all are, as different of our music tastes and our dietary tastes and where we hang out and our circle of friends and are we professionals or are we just sort of like backpackers around the universe? What we find is that as different as we are, we all go through the same things. We all fall deeply in love. We got our hearts broken. We want, we want great health and sometimes we lose our health. We lose our money. We go through disaster. We go through, you know, uh, just watch what's happening. Uh, Hurricane Helene. We go through yeah. like devastating things where we lose everything. Then sometimes we get like fortunes dumped on our lap. And so we are very much playing a similar game as they've been playing for life. As this has been going on forever. This has been going on for thousands of years. And uh, your film, it, it is a spiritual journey of, of, of a bunch of personalities almost coming to their knees and turning towards spirit and trying to, and it doesn't tell you what to do but it just shows you and, and and to me it sort of encourages the spiritualist hey take a step forward there is no material security and that's what i really like it and, and, and you showed it through such a colorful um cinema uh, artistic and cinematic ways and i will say this tom and I, i'm going to give you a big kudos and pat on the back for this it's a great example of me watching you on your journey is you take what you're good at. You don't give up what you're good at in spiritual life. You take what you're good at and you use it in a spiritual way. And I, I, I've witnessed you and I'm like incredibly inspired by you because it's very easy when you get a film out, when you get a record, quote, record or CD or whatever they call them now, out. When you get a big piece of art published, you do a performance, you you put out a novel or a book or whatever. It's very easy to step in to check me out. I finally did it. I finally accomplished it. And although that it, there is a birthing process there, it's not about you. You're not doing this for your ego. You've done this in a mood of service the entire time. And therefore, it's so much more rewarding. Even if you were... If you were to do it for your ego and it got tons of validation, it was a number one selling there's still a deep, deep emptiness. But when you do it without that ego driving it, there's such a rewarding feeling. And you really contributed something, I feel like, to um, a popular culture that's going to last. Thank you. That's really, that's really kind. Don't make me cry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad. I, might I, be. I am a softie, but no, thank you. The, that's how, I'm glad, you know, I think anyone can put yourself in a seat of an interviewee in that movie and relate somehow. Mm. Um, like I've been, it's funny to say it's not about me, mm. but how many times have I watched it and I still get something out of it or I need something. It's an easy go-to for me when I need straightening out. I look and I know where to go and go. I need to hear this right now. Okay. I'm kind of losing my my way 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a journey back to God since 2017 with you, actually. Yeah, Tom has been to India with me so many times, been here at the farm so many times, and I feel like you're part of the family. Thank so you. now here's the here's the call to action. We're going to ask everybody to go to this link. And guess what? He did it. It's sort of like not like a Netflix where you have to subscribe to this uh, station. Can you explain what the ox? What is it called? The oxygen? Network? <laughs> uh, the, on 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 a computer, it's called Entertainment Oxygen on you know computer. But there's an app, EO Flix. Um, there are alternative platforms now to watch independent films. I'm not going to go into the whole dissertation about why, but they make it. You just you can just go to that app, sign up. At the movie, I think, is two ninety nine or three dollars. Two ninety nine yeah. or three dollars. It's there just you go. to make it so everybody can watch it. Okay, know? that's great. We have um, no, we have no reason not. It's to actually an app, and I'll tell you, I'm reading from their website: Amazon Fire TV, Android, iOS, Chromecast, Apple TV. I there and Roku, but I know some of this isn't up yet because it's so new. So they're in develop. They're getting finalized for. Uh, if you don't see it on Roku or Apple TV, they're in development. I don't even know how to use the TV anymore. I'm oh, like, it's so confusing. Where's Channel Thirteen? I'm. I'm where's PBS? Anyway, because um, I'm sure you. I'm sure you don't have a TV over there. I you don't. don't yeah, you don't know how to use the TV anymore, do you? You could. You no. if you were to go to a hotel, Kostuba, you look at that giant. Uh, remote you'd be like i don't know what this it's is it's very confusing it's confusing come on well, there's but, like three remotes at, at i know and now there's like we, we can't even figure that one remote now they got three remotes we're so old <laughs> i gotta bring me in my 10 year old just to watch a television show yes. anyway tom the link is on the board and that's the ask i want everybody to watch it and i want everybody to go to either wisdom of the sages or raganath yogi and share this link on their stories and that we'll have a link on the um, on the story to go right to the uh, website so they can watch this. But we want to get everybody in our community to pass this around, spread the word and watch it themselves. And um, I'm sure there's a way to give feedback because it's social media world now. There's yeah, um, co comment on this. Give it some love. It really when my book came out, this Wisdom of Sages community really supported it. It just like. It, it, it became number one on Amazon sell list. Let's make let's let's push this movie higher and higher and encourage people not just to like let entertainment be mind dulling. Let it be inspiring. And that's what you've done. I'm really if you don't mind me saying I'm really proud of you. I'm really inspired by what you've done. And you set a great example for other artists. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for what you're doing, Prabhu. I'm really grateful. No, I'm I'm happy to serve. All right, thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, we're thank, gonna post all much. that stuff. Thank hey, you. Hey, we're on TV tonight. <laughs> you are at eight p.m. What does that mean? So tonight, wait, don't run away. Let oh. me. Let me. We're it, we're being interviewed together. Really? Yeah. I gotta check my uh my executive see. secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Let me copy this link. So right, throw that link in there too. Talk tonight. We are being interviewed by Brian Sebastian, who has movie reviews and more. Apparently, this is uh, it's substantial. Yes, is this is no like this oh, is really? no like dad's in his uh, garage and or in his you know man cave doing it's a not, podcast. It's, it's not CBS, NBC, or ABC. That's the only TV me and Costuba know. So this is, uh, they said here, people can listen to the radio show or view the TV show at the link I'll put up. Okay, put up the link. I put up the link. I don't want to take much more time, but okay. we'll Th be thank there you, Tom. tonight. And they're going to send us a link together. Okay. We love okay. you, my brother. Love you too. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thank Thanks, you, Tom. Tom. Right, thank Tom was thank one of the OG you. ones. He used to come to the farm five o'clock in the morning sit there and uh it's a very original he was one of the real ogs of the super soul sacred sangha slash wisdom of the sages pre-wisdom of the sages it's great to have him still there now he's living in butler pennsylvania getting special mercy that's where Prabhupada first came to america butler pennsylvania 
All right, we're back in the singing, dancing, and flower offering elephant story. Oh, this is where you find out the deal, who the alligator was. You find out who the alligator was? You find yeah. out who Remember, I was, was telling you it was hoo-hoo. Yeah. It was hoo-hoo. Okay. Om namo bhagavati. Wait. And then Ryanam the Muskita and Adam Chaivan Rotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Madi Rayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, and to Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayesha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamasloke Bhakti Rabhavati Nice Sticky. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome from the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chaksurun Madhatam Yena Tazmai Shi Gudavena Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we got a new chapter. It's Canto 8, Chapter 4, Text 1. This is a, yeah, this chapter is the last chapter that we hear about Gajendra now. Right? It's like yeah. the we've been chap four chapters of this. But it's it's a nice chapter. It's a nice way to wrap things up because it is like everything gets revealed. Particularly, we get to hear who was this crocodile? Where did he come from? Why was he there? We get to hear who was Gajendra. Why did he, how did he get there? You know, and we're kind of zooming out. We're going into uh, past lives. Kostu, I, I find this fascinating. Like we have, you and me have a relationship. We have a nice relationship. But there's like, there's a reason why we're in this relationship now. And there's a backstory behind a veil. Don't you find that fascinating? I do. We had a reason. You do. Not necessarily about our own relationship. But oh, come on. Don't you think it's fascinating that you and I, they were somehow connected in a previous. We wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't have known, be known each other as long as we have been doing such a. It's a very intimate service, very this intimate. podcast. And we've probably do, been doing stuff like this perhaps for lifetimes. <laughs> it's possible. You know? How you do know. we get out? Who knows what that relationship <laughs> was previously? <laughs> or or how can we stay longer? How can we stay longer? You know, you could have been my son in a previous life. You know, I could have been cradling you, you know? Well, you know do that now if you want. There's and there is that like um novelty to it, you know, like, oh, what was behind the scenes? And there is a fascination behind that. But I think there's like a broader kind of thing to understand. And and this is something you know, by reading it in the book and thinking about it this way, right? Thinking about, oh, okay, there was a reason why Gajendra became an elephant. And there was a reason why the crocodile became the crocodile. Yeah. And and in the end, it, it's so interesting how the Bhagavatam lays things up. But like in the end, we see that everyone was blessed. The The crocodile that had its head cut off was blessed and Gajendra who had a crocodile on his leg you know is blessed and there's there is a message there that if we could zoom out mm. in our own lives we could actually see something about the nature of Krishna that all he does is bless Really, that, it's that, like, <laughs> that's a beautiful statement. And and this is this has started. This is what we're doing here with the Bhagavatam every day. We're shifting our consciousness now instead of a world where good where we see good and bad and inauspicious and auspicious and a malefic planet and whatever the opposite of a malefic planet is, a positive planet. Auspicious. We, yeah. Auspicious planet. We start to see. Wait a second. This entire world is not a bad thing. It's not we're not doing time in prison to grind our face in the dirt eternally. God is not making us suffer eternal. There's a reason why we're here, and it's a growth cycle. It's to learn lessons. It's to recalibrate. It's to lift us higher. And sometimes to lift us higher, there has to be a little bit of yeah, there has to be a little bit of uh, correction. Yeah, a, a correction. And oftentimes it's because we want to live our live apart from a spiritual reality. 
And so this whole fantasy is created. And so those are blessings. But, you know, it's very easy to read this story and try to find a spiritual thing. Okay, here's an elephant. He's got an ego. Then a crocodile gets him. Okay, he has a spiritual revelation. Then Vishnu comes down. This alligator, this crocodile, he just wants to eat what he wants to eat. Now, why, why does he get his head cut off? <laughs> That's what alligators do. They got to eat too. <laughs> and then you realize, actually, this alligator's got a whole backstory. And everybody you meet, everybody that you hate, has some backstory also. Mm. And they're also in the process of purification. It might take them lifetimes, maybe millions of lifetimes, but we should understand there is a benevolent, all-loving, not sadistic, all-loving God mm. who's making us go through these crazy cycles to the, eventually uplift us and liberate us. You know, I remember Vaisheshika Prabhu shared a story once like that happened in his own like kitchen where he was in his house and there was a little bird that had flown into the kitchen through the window. Mm. And he was like, oh, you know, poor bird. It's like kind of stuck inside the house. It's got to get back out into its natural environment, you know, where it can be happy and find its nest and right. get its food and, and all that it needs to do. Let me try to help it get out. So he's walking around. And he's opening up all the windows. And I don't know if he was getting some broom or something, you know, trying to like nudge right. the bird. But the bird is like totally resisting his efforts to help it and interpreting them as if it's like an attack. Like violence you know? or something, yeah. And he said, and he said, you know, he spent a long time trying to help this bird, and the bird is just responding as if he's the enemy. And then eventually the bird kind of landed like right on the windowsill. And just before it finally was liberated and free, you know, and looked back at him. And, and he said he could just feel like the soul of the bird saying, like, okay, you tried your best to get me, but you couldn't get me, you know, and like and the bird flew off. And, and um, you know, the Bhagavatam is kind of helping us understand that, like, that's kind of where we're at. There's this beautiful loving. He's not the evil judge. He's not the sadistic, cruel, you know, um, uh, sadistic, you know, kind of ruler. He's not even the inapproachable kind of creator, universal creator. Mm. But like Krishna or Vishnu, just like sweetness. And, and it's... It's just our inability to understand it. I, I saw a quote yesterday. Oh, I understand said, what you're saying. It's just like an inability to trust. Well, there, there was this quote I saw that said, fear is just, I, I think this is, I, I'm uh, recalling it as best I can, but that fear is just the inability to see Krishna's hand in everything. And, you know, if if we had that, we can actually... That that is the wise person. That is the sage that's moving through life with that faith and that understanding. And it, then it really just becomes a question of like like as we read through these the, this story and we come to the end and and everything's revealed how how this is all a blessing. The, our question as we move through life is just how will the blessing be revealed? You know, it seems like this is difficult. It seems like it's painful. I don't have all the answers right now, and I don't even. I, I have a theoretical zoomed out perspective that that's giving me the ability to, to process mm -hmm. this in, in, you know, in a way that's beneficial. But eventually I may have the fully zoomed out and I'll be able to understand why I went through everything in my life. Sometimes we even get that in our life, right? Oh, now I understand why that happened. You know, it, it was a blessing, actually. Mm -hmm. And, and Bob with Tom saying that that's the nature. Like in Krishna's Leela, when he comes, you know, he, he, here he is, he kills the crocodile. Crocodile is blessed. Everyone's just getting blessed by him, even the, the parent enemies. And that's also the nature of this world. Even and, in, and this is something a lot of people are going to snap back at and become angry about and start pointing fingers about it. But to be able to say that actually it's all a blessing, even it yeah, may be hard funny. to understand. It's, it's, yeah, it's your white privilege speaking again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but that's exactly that's exactly it. And we're, we are asked to zoom the hell out and see actually that. Otherwise, there is nothing but a turbulent boat ride in this world. And Tulsi, who was on the show the other day, has left such a lasting effect on us. She's in a place where things are getting bombed, yeah. in, a, in a situation that's so precarious. And she's keeping, she's like a st sage of steady mind. I, we right. were so impressed by how she was reacting to everything that was going, uh, she was going through. 
and she she just delivered real wisdom. That was Q and A day, like uh, two two Saturday. days ago. Yeah, uh, so impressive. Um, but but yeah, there is nothing. There is nothing but care going out. And if I can just shift my consciousness to that, I'll be out of the ping pong constant seasonal changes of happiness and distress. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, that's what the entire yoga system is about. This concept of samadhi or an evenness through the harsh change of seasons that our material life goes through, the harsh gain and loss that we go through on a regular basis. And can I find some groundedness in the subtle, in the trust that there is some uh, some energetic good? And sometimes you'll hear non-Krishna Bhakta speak about this, this True. idea of deep gratitude, this idea of a, a universal for taking care of us and to trust and fear is, you know, fear is a joke or fear is fear. What do they say? So many things against fear. But it's, it's really this trust in this idea that there's energetic forces working for us. And I, th I think thoughtful people get this. And what's your other option just to live in a world of uh, friends and enemies and hate and love? No, we got to understand that to the degree that I can get connected with this, it also becomes contagious type of um, thought process. And it actually does change the world. We were using that example of blowing on a boil. That doesn't really make the boil go away. It gives a temporary relief. This is really, this is really fighting for a change, and the, and the, and 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 it's a hard, deep knot in our own heart that has to be untied. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you know, some we were talking uh, a couple weeks ago about, and sorry for all the women out there named Karen. <laughs> You know about the Karens, right? That you get these videotapes nowadays where it shows like one person who's paranoid and angry. You know they're upset. They're seeing some <laughs> horrible injustice is being done. They're they're ready to call the police, and they're just totally misinterpreting the circumstances and and making a fool of themselves. I feel bad for every woman named Karen right now. <laughs> okay, but, it's horrible. But but more, we had to feel bad for ourselves if we were thinking like Karen's in this life. And, and in a sense, Bhagavatam's giving this picture of the divine, of God, that if you really enter into it and try to understand, it's like, have I been a Karen all along? You know, like thinking, oh God, if there's a God, there's cruel, or there's no way there can be God, or, you know, because I just don't, I just have trouble processing the events that I'm going through in life, right? I'm having trouble processing my circumstances and it's making me paranoid. It's making me angry. It's making me um, hateful, you know, sure. even towards God, the one that's like the one that's just doing nothing but blessing, you know. So makes chapters like this it. help spell that out. Help, makes, makes me think of an interesting squirrel. Um, you know, when we, you were growing up, it was like, David, your name is David. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Davids. There are a lot of Matthews. There was a lot of Jimmys. Those were names of our generation. Then the, 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 the this generation, we're, we're, we're parents. It's sort of like the names are like Sage. What else? You got a name? I don't know. Names like this. Winter. No one in this next generation will be naming their daughters Karen. No one will. <laughs> yeah, They're going to be a void in the world. In, in the name Karen, you're not going to find any Karens anywhere. <laughs> yes. In the same way, like no one's naming their kid Adolf. That name is like off. That <laughs> never again is any parent going, you know what? I was thinking Jimmy or Winter or Adolf. That's not happening. It's going to be Winter or Jimmy. Anyway. What about Gajendra? Gajendra? You know, I don't think that is a name like in India. If any but Indians are on the show, you can listen. I don't think people are naming their kids Gajendra. Gajendra. Maybe. Oh, yes, there. Well, maybe. We know a We know a good Go for me. Maybe they are. Gajendra. All right. Shall we All dive right. in? Yes. Oh, Ar Aravin says it is a famous name here. Okay, I oh. stand corrected. Gajendra. Shrikas. Okay. <laughs> Where are we? Did I? Didn't I already? Oh, we are. You I already did this. That's number one. Sri Sukadev Goswami said. When the Lord delivered Gajendra, king of the elephants, all the demigods, sages, and Gandharvas, headed by Brahma and Shiva, praised this activity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and showered flowers upon 
both the Lord and Gajendra, right? You glorify the Lord and the devotee of the Lord. The elephant. Mm. There was a beating of kettle drums in the heavenly planets. The inhabitants of Gandharva Loka began to dance and sing while great sages and the inhabitants of Charanaloka and Siddhaloka offered prayers to the supreme personality of Godhead, Purushottama. It's like a musical, but it's like way better. Much better. Much better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is like a musical. There's dancing and there's singing. I guess that's why we love musicals so much, it's, it's a Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's just a weak presentation of what's going on on higher levels, right? Spontaneously, yeah. everyone just like breaks into, they don't have to rehearse it. They don't, you know, it's just like, it's in them. And they can it's just, in them singing. It's coming it's from a, the heart. Glorifying. Sing, glorifying yeah, Lord Vishnu. Singing and dancing is within us all. Yeah. Right? Yes, they're much better at it. Much better sans ego. Yeah. Okay. The best of the Gandharvas, King Huhu, having been cursed by Deva Lamuni, had become a crocodile. Here we go. Now, this was a... I, I, they I were both kings. Story. You know this story? Uh, it's, it's interesting. They talk about it here. I heard it from Dina Bundu. <laughs> Something in Brudge. King who? It was about a cow. A cow and a calf. And a tiger was trying to eat the cat. Or a tiger was trying to eat the cow. I, I can't recall it all. Do you, can you, Mara? We were just listening to it. But anyway. Um, do you want to share it? Uh, no. I, I was thinking something else. You go ahead. Okay, well, it's okay. I'm just going to keep reading. The right. best of the Gandharvas, King Huhu, having been cursed by Deva Lamuni, ha had become a crocodile. Now, having been delivered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he assumed a very beautiful form as a Gandharva. Understanding by whose mercy this had happened, he immediately offered his respectful obeisances with his head and began chanting prayers just suitable for the transcendental, transcendental Lord the supreme eternal who is worshiped by the choicest verses. Yeah. So now maybe it talks about here in the commentary, the story of how the Gandharva had become a crocodile will be described later. Okay. The curse by which the Gandharva took this position was actually a blessing, not a curse. Okay. That's, that's the thing, right? If we could see everything in life as a blessing, even the really hard stuff, even the pain, it's a blessing. Then, then we're understanding seeing Krishna's hand in everything. At least you gotta to, see it in yourself. At least theoretically, right? You gotta see it in yourself, because sometimes devotees have this tendency where you're just like, "Oh, I just broke my leg," and you're like, "Oh, you really got the mercy." It's almost like you, <laughs> you know, I've got incredible, horrible dysentery. Oh, you're getting the mercy in the dom. You know, sometimes you can't. You gotta see it in yourself. You can't tell everybody else they're getting the mercy. We have to feel compassion towards other people. And when it happens to us, we got to see this. This is Krishna's mercy. We have to internalize those downturns as I'm getting the mercy. When people do give us that compassion, oh my God, you hurt your leg. Oh my God, you got dysentery. I'm so sorry. What can I do for you? And our answer should be, I'm just getting some mercy. I'm just getting some, I'm burning off some karma. What a better way to reframe pain, loss, sickness. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 Prabhupada continues, one should not be displeased when a saintly person curses someone mm. for his curse indirectly is a blessing. Right, so even the, the extensions of, of Krishna are like his representatives in a sense. Sure. The Gandharva had the mentality of inhabitant of the celestial planetary system, and for him to become an associate of the Supreme Lord would have taken millions of long years. However, because he was cursed by Deva Rishi, Rishi, he became a crocodile, and in only one life was fortunate to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. Yeah, so there's there's blessings going around here. Yeah, we got to be careful who we're cursing. Like, oh, it's horrible killing the crocodiles poor you know yeah material world's confusing we're only seeing it from a very narrow vantage point of what's actually happening all right having it, been favored we're supposed to you know i i, I liked vaisheshika's Prabhu's story because it's just like you see where his he's got that sage like vision so most people have been like oh man it was wasted a half an hour trying to get a bird out of my window <laughs> you know right but he's seeing it 
and it's making him think about life and it's reinforcing his perspective that is something by which it's it's giving him the ability to move through life very gracefully and always learning and and and, and uh with this a heart that's always becoming softer mm. you know towards god and towards everyone uh you know rather than saying you know rather than interpreting one's circumstances in a uh, he's saying you know i'm like that little bird you know i'm being helped at every step and i'm thinking i'm I, i'm being cursed at every step yeah mm. i like that i like that Having been favored by the causeless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and having regained his original form, King Hoo-Hoo, great name, huh? Mm -hmm. King Hoo-Hoo circumambulated the Lord and offered his obeisances. Then, in the presence of all the demigods headed by Brahma, he returned to Gandharva Loka. How did he do he that? Been... How did he do that? Yeah, what form, you know? We don't know. Yeah. Did he transport, like on Star Trek? Did he jump on some kind of flower airplane? Garuda. Did he just fly <laughs> like you know on a peacock. He had been freed from all sinful reactions. Who who was the other person? It was hoo hoo and ha ha. Yeah, ha ha. Hoo -hoo, hoo hoo and ha ha. Because Gajendra, the king of the elephants, had been touched directly by the hands of the supreme personality of Godhead. He was immediately freed from all material ignorance and bondage. Oh my God! Imagine how much that must feel like. Very nice. Getting freed from ignorance and bondage must be like, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> like this is so good. I feel so much better. Thus, he received the salvation of Sarupya Mukti, mm -hmm. in which he achieved the same bodily features as the Lord being dressed in yellow garments and possessing four hands. Yeah, Sarupya Mukti. One That's the, the one we don't want, right, in Bhakti? No, no, Sarupya is all right. Sarupya? What's the one we yeah. don't want? We don't want the one where you merge into the form of the Lord. Where you, Sarupya. What is that? Salokya, okay. Sarupya, Sarupya, Samipya, and Sharshti. Right. So, but he, he, he just received one of these uh, bodies that the residents of Vaikuntha or Vishnu Loka, you know, mm. where... In the spiritual world, everyone's got this um, this form that looks like Lord Vishnu, and it's it's a incredibly blissful to be in that form. You know, it's very very satisfying. None of the drawbacks that we have. This Gajendra had formerly been a Vaishnav and the king of the country known as Pandya, which is the province of Dravida, that's South India. And maybe Aravin put on the message board. Is that I think Tamil that's Nadu? Tamil Nadu. Yeah. yeah. Look at this Tamil The Dravidians. Yeah. In his previous life, he was known as Indrajumna Maharaj. Okay. So now we're going back to his previous life. No, Indrajumna Maharaj, sorry, retired from family life and went to the Malayan Hills. That's where you get the sandalwood, sandalwood mm -hmm. the Malayan Hills, where he had a small cottage for his ashram. Oh. He wore matted locks on his head, and he always engaged in austerities. This is what these kings commonly do, we find here, right? They, they, they weren't ordinary kings. They were like king philosophers. sages, sages, philosophers. They were deep. They were just waiting for the moment they could put their son in place or someone else qualified in place. They weren't hanging on to power to the last moment. They yeah. were ready to let it go. And then they wanted to go and live like the sages did, performing austerities, living in a in a little cottage. I was thinking like Biden and Trump, they would have been retired years a ago. Long, long it, Like time. If they were actually sages, they would have been yeah. like, we're over this. We're going to prepare for death now. And yeah. we're going to. Yes, <laughs> we're going to put Biden's son in charge of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Harry Krishna. He wore matted locks on his head and always engaged in austerities. This was the king. Once, while observing a vow of silence, he was fully engaged in the worship of Lord and absorbed in the ecstasy of love of Godhead. Interesting. So he was in some kind of samadhi-like state, but focused, it says, achutam on, on the Lord. Achutam samarch, samarchayam as. Asha, he was he was in this state of um, samadhi, but it was in meditating on 
on Lord Vishnu. It was not meditating on Lord it Vishnu? Was. It was. It was on a chuttam, on, on the infallible Lord. Okay. Once while observing a vow of silence, he was fully engaged in the worship of the Lord and absorbed in the ecstasy of love of Godhead. While Indra Maharaj was engaged in ecstatic meditation, worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the great sage Agastya Muni arrived there, surrounded by his disciples. Okay. When the Muni okay. saw that Maharaj Indra who was sitting in a secluded place, remained silent and did not follow the etiquette of offering him a reception, he got angry. Right, he's sitting there in meditation, and the sages show up. And instead of saying, "Welcome, can I get you a glass of water? Have a seat. Are you hungry? You must be tired. Let me wash your feet." He didn't do that. He was in some type of trance. He zoned out. So he sort of like, uh, in one didn't sense, ignore, he ignored him. Ignored him. He ignored Neglected the great him. sage. Right. Augustia Muni then spoke a curse against against the king. This king in Jujumna is not at all gentle. Hmm. Being low and uneducated, he has insulted a Brahmana. Hmm. He may therefore enter the region of darkness and receive the dull, dumb body of an elephant. Ouch. Ouch. So even in his evoking of anger, because he was a great soul, that anger has a positive effect. We shouldn't be like, oh, Augusta Muni, he's so... You know, he shouldn't be offended. Come on, you should learn that, Augusta Muni. You take no offense. No, it's different. When you're on that high platform, even the cursing is a benediction. Even the chastisement is a benediction. And the thing about, you know, I always say, I take no offense. I take no offense. This is how we live. This is the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. We, are, we, in, we invite criticism and critique from our superiors. We want to be. We want to be corrected by our superiors, especially. Uh, be, why? Because our superiors aren't trying to grind us and crush us. They're actually want to. They they're actually our best friends. They want to see us grow. They want to see us evolve. There's people in your life that actually love you in the same way you were saying. Vasheshika actually wants to help that baby bird get out of the house. He's the well wisher of the bird. We shouldn't think that those people are just. Uh, and this happens a lot. We we hear we get corrected, and then we resent the person that's correcting us. Mm. There's people that actually want our well wishing, and then they they correct us. Don't be offended by that. Pick a pick a few people that you want them. Do you correct. want to become angry at? Oh, no. did you accept? <laughs> that you want to accept their criticism, you, your, their okay. critique. It's not really criticism, right? Um, they're they're try they're actually rewarding you. You know, it seems that the sage was genuinely angry, right? He was genu genuinely upset, upset that, I guess, you know, upset that, hey, why would you abandon Dharma and behave the way that you're behaving? This is wrong, you know? And the, but, but when he cursed, even though it was a curse, you know, generated out of anger, and even though it seems like it's, um, like it's its purpose is to make him suffer right it wasn't it, it the purpose was to reform him you know so he said okay you you experience this now and but it but it almost seems like this i'm just kind of intuiting this mm -hmm. but it seems like when you're on that level of like Augusta Muni, just your just like um positivity just works through you like almost spontaneously because you've given up ego you've given up attachments and so on that almost anything that he's doing is helpful even when he responds out of anger it's a benediction you know there's right. no, nothing wasted or nothing it, it's it's all whatever's coming out of him is positive mm. all right so we got time for one more Breta. yeah this is text 11. Or maybe why don't, why don't we wait? Because now Augusta Muni's. Oh, no, he spoke. Okay. Shukadeh Goswami. Continue. Okay. My dear king, after Augusta Muni had thus cursed King, King, King Indrajumna, the Muni left that place along with his disciples. Mm -hmm. Since the king was a devotee, he accepted Augusta Muni's curse as well as welcome, right? Yeah. He's not, wait, unfair. No. 
I accept your curse. Augustine Muni's curse as welcome because it was the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There you Therefore, go. yeah, what a great way to see he, the world. He this doesn't is a know how the blessing is going to be revealed, but he has the faith that it's a blessing. Yeah, it's it's this concept of like, I can't be hurt in this world. Everything's working for me. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Therefore, although in his next life, he got the body of an elephant because of bhakti, devotional service, he remembered how to worship and offer prayers to the Lord. All right. It all worked out okay, Kastuba. It sure did. There's more. It gets better for him. It gets better. Okay. Miss Mara? Ready for some takeaways? Give me some takeaways. I got good stuff to do. As different as we are, we all go through the same things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all very much the same. Take what you're good at and use it in a spiritual way. Yeah. All Krishna does is give blessings. Left and right. Yep. We're in a growth cycle to recalibrate and lift a sire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone you hate has a backstory too. Yeah, we yeah. all do. Yeah. We're like scared little birds not trusting Krishna. Hmm. I can't look at my head. I can't look ahead <laughs> <at> little parents. <laughs> yeah. Keep even mindedness through the harsh change of seasons. Okay. Okay. Am I acting like a Karen? I might be. I don't like that word. I'm not going to use that word. Because I feel bad for every w woman named Karen out there. We understand that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad. Your compassionate nature. Imagine if it was like Kostuba, the Kostuba. Don't be a Kostuba. You know, how would you feel? All right. Good point. Invite correction from well wishers. Okay, invite it. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reframe it and see pain and curses as a blessing to see God everywhere. Yeah. Don't be a namist. And even the beheaded crocodile is blessed. That's right. Yeah. Even me and Kostuba have a backstory. I thought you were going to say that. Of course you guys have. Or I thought you were going to say maybe Kostuba was rocking a son in a previous life and I cradled him. Maybe. You don't know. You Thanks, everybody, gone. for joining us. Remember, here's the call to action today. Go to that link, download that movie. It's cheap. It's cheap. Everyone should do this. And um, also share. Thomas, I want you to send me that clip so I can promote it. And um, uh, let's all share that with everybody we know. Maybe you can uh, specifically share with people that you know or just share it on your stories or send it to someone specifically, maybe a family member. Hey, check this out. I think you'd like it. And we all want to be entertained, so entertain yourself with something transcendental. The movie's called Something Divine, directed and uh, by Thomas Essig, one of our old-time old OG Zoomers, and really grateful to have him on the show. Ah, uh, no show tomorrow. No show tomorrow. We're back on Thursday. I'm going to be live in Lancho, Florida. Looking forward to seeing everybody. You flying down? You good? You good? I'm good. You, you, fl you flying down? I'm flying down. Early tomorrow morning. Early tomorrow morning. There? Nope, I'm staying here. Staying back at the Ponderosa. Okay. Quiet days at the Ponderosa. Peaceful. Yeah. We got the chief coming up this weekend. I'm going to miss the chief. He's engaging the uh, ashramites in Peacock Seva. Mayur Seva. Got a little peacock for you, Kasuba. Be you get with them. How many peacocks are you getting? We already got them. We got three. three. What about peahens? We got two peacocks, one peahen. How old are they? Like, are they fully grown or? They're, no, they're young. they're young. Do they have the plumage yet? No, that comes later. Their crown is really they cute. They got the crown. Oh. Their little doodaddle mohawk up the top. That's adorable. And how are they going to get through the winter there? Peac well, peacocks peacocks are all weather animals. They look like lizard. Yeah. Well, they have. A, we're building a, a pen for them, but uh, they're like a turkey. They actually can live outside, even in the cold. They can live in Idaho. They can live in 
Yeah. They're hardy. Hardy birds. <laughs>